Good morning, YouTube. I've compiled another list of Hoovy's hot takes. Whoa, Hoovy scoops. Yes. Here we go, behind the scenes. So some of these you're going to agree with me wholeheartedly, okay. and I think one's going to really make you mad, but I've compiled a list Ooh. of what I think is the most overpriced collector cars today. So they, some are old, some are new, yeah. and all of them I think are way, way too much money for what they are, even though I like all of these cars right. and have owned almost all of them. Right. But it is a list of 10. Okay. And the first one takes us to Italy. Right. You've been to Italy. <laughs> I was. When you were on The Bachelor. I was on The Bachelor a long time ago. It was with Prince Lorenzo Borghese. But Voted he was off in the first show. American. And I did never, I never got a rose. <laughs> never got a rose. First episode. First episode. So oh. he was a pretty overrated Italian. <laughs> He's just American, but the, his family lineage was from Italy, so they thought, let's shoot it in Italy. Okay, well, I think a very overpriced Italian car is the Ferrari 355. Oh, okay. I've owned two of these. Mm -hmm. Both of them I bought for under $50,000 when I traded to the little company, but under $50,000. Now they are trading for stupid, stupid money. What do you think of the looks? I, I mean, they're very, very cool cars. They're very sexy, but I'm surprised that they're overpriced. What is it about them that... that car collectors are loving. Well, so most recent sales, $206,000. What? If it's not a Spider convertible, yeah. the money is just insane. $150,000, 160. What? The recent prices have just been insane. $256,000. I mean, I just, in general, for the collector car world, I love seeing prices go up. I love seeing the value there. There's a lot of people that are still interested in cars. It's not just the super duper older boomers that these old classic cars are dying out that they love from the 50s and 40s. Like, there's still the new generations that are getting into these cars. And so it makes me happy that any values are going up. But you're right. thinking these are overvalued. They are great looking. Mm -hmm. They have gated male transmissions for the most part. The F1 paddle shift ones don't bring very much money. Mm -hmm. Beautiful sounding engine that revs to 8,500 RPM, 375 horsepower, mm -hmm. but that is a lot of money. Right. That gets you a 360 mm -hmm. manual, a 430 manual, mm -hmm. the two newer generations, or for half price, you can have a 348, have the side strikes like a Ferrari Testarossa. Ooh. You can have a Ferrari Testarossa <laughs> for a hundred grand less than that. Those are sexy. It just seems like it's way overpriced and also it is one of the most unreliable Ferraris ever made. Is it? So many gotchas, so many issues. I don't get it personally. What is it about them that's just hard to maintain? Uh, bronze valve guides which require tearing the engine apart. There's the headers that like to crack. There's the belt services every five to seven years where it takes the whole engine has to come out to do. 360s and 430s, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So you it's, it's really, annoying. really sexy talking about cars like that. It's not worth $200,000. It's a great $100,000 car, but you can have a four five eight. You know, so many different Ferraris you can have for that kind of money. A 599, that's what I have. So, uh, next on my list. Are you real? Are you a real person? Next on the, the list thing. Car is straight spit out cars. the DeLorean. Oh, you think that's overpriced? Way overpriced. Because your one of your good friends, Bob, has, he has two a of them. beautiful, just perfect, really low Very mile. Very low mileage. Maybe the best example of a DeLorean ever. He's, and what is he listed for? He has it listed for like ninety thousand dollars. But yeah, right. I don't want to make Bob mad. But that's that's the market. I mean, if you look on mm -hmm. recent auction sales. Uh, there's some that have sold for over $100,000, which is crazy. Well, and I'm seeing Once, one of the best ones that Bob has, I totally get why he has a yeah, price like that. He's asking 90 for it, and so no he's matter, a little under. No matter where you go, everyone wants to take their picture with it. I'm sorry. There's a lot of cars that are cool, and people want to say, oh, cool, you're at a gas station, and they're coming to talk to you. But the DeLorean, every age range is going to walk up to you and want to take a peek at it right. and take a picture of it. Well, they made almost 10,000 of them, mm -hmm. even though it was only made for a few years before they went bankrupt. But the car is one big compromise. It has a fiberglass frame. It has a PRV engine with very, very, mm -hmm. very low power. Mm -hmm. It, The stainless steel body and the doors are very cool. The doors I, I bought, are I bought one for 19,000 bucks. It had a bad transmission and we swapped it. I, I think I sold it for mid 30s. That's a 30, 40. If it's a really nice low mileage one, it's like about fifty thousand dollar car. Right. But the driving experience on those, I know Bob loves the driving experience. 
it's it's nothing special. Well, the the generation that grew up with Back to the Future is just coming of age, where they're coming into money more. They they have a savings account now, and and they're able to buy these cars, and that's very nostalgic for people who grew up in the '90s. So I get why their values coming up. They're really cool. I mean, they kept going, okay? Right. But would you pay? Fifty thousand dollars for one with mileage on it, or no, ninety thousand well, dollars. Because they made so many of them, I don't see why the value is that much. So I understand what you're saying for that. Mm -hmm. I, cool cars. I enjoyed mm -hmm. owning it. I enjoyed the experience, even though it's not that great of a driving car. Not that comfortable. The windows only roll down like this far, <laughs> so like getting fast through through a window. There's, there's just a lot of compromises, a lot of annoyances. Mm -hmm. They're not the most reliable. Cool cars, but not hundred thousand cool. dollar cars. Right. No. Okay. So next on my list is the Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series. So the 90s Toyota Land Cruisers, which have been stupid. Everyone loves these. I see them all over, and I feel like they're all in pretty good condition. Well, still on the road. Even, they hold up really well. Yeah. So even ones with 300, 400,000 right. miles and rough are worth 10 grand. But the recent prices have been crazy. One just sold for $47,000. <laughs> with 133,000 miles on it. What? Wait, $47,000? Correct. What? Is it actual, like, real Real sold? deal sold. Let's look at this one. $93,000, so almost hundred grand after fees somebody paid for one of these with 59,000 miles. So what? Not, not like one mile on it or a thousand miles on it. These oh, have been driven and used. $100,000 yes. for that? Right. That's insane. Insane. Is there like golds in the seats? The record on bringing a trailer is one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars for what? one with forty-seven hundred miles. What it's, is it about them that people are obsessed with? They are pretty invincible. Mm -hmm. They are great looking. Now Toyota has recently brought back the Land Cruiser and the mm -hmm. Lexus SUV Land Cruisers, and they look a lot like this. Right, they because do. Because people love this boxy, it's a cool boxy shape. look. Bronco, new Bronco, but. Oh my God, you know buy a hundred series for a third or a quarter of the price, the mm -hmm. next generation Land Cruiser, and it's more capable off-road, it's more comfortable, mm -hmm. everything is better, and it still looks boxy for a fraction of the price. Right. Buy a new Jeep, buy a new <laughs> Bronco, buy buy a new Land Cruiser for right. Christ's sake, for that kind of money. Right. No, it makes no sense. But you know what's gonna be interesting, you know how they're doing all these resto mods with the first generation Broncos and the Blazers, when are they going to start doing that with these and just really customizing them? Because I see that in like the next five, ten years, it's going to be the new wave of resto mod trucks. There's there's definitely a lot of aftermarket support for these, but mostly the ones bringing money right now are the ones that are preserved and crazy. original. Crazy. Like but it's it's stupid. That's you agree with me? That's crazy. stupid. Crazy. Yes, I agree with this one wholeheartedly. DeLorean, okay. not as much. I love them. Nostalgic for the '90s generation. Toyota, yeah, no. And speaking of Toyotas. Mm -hmm. The same vein, the Mark IV Supra, cool car, mm -hmm. iconic, way, 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 stupid, stupid overpriced. Right. Why? Uh, what kind of price are we talking about? So they made tens of thousands of these mm -hmm. cars. There's, there, there's, there's over 10,000 for sure in the United States that were sold here, even though they say it wasn't a very good seller. And the prices of these very nice examples, like here's one for $232,000. Wait a minute. For a turbo six speed with 13,000 miles. What? Is that from the factory? 25,000 mile one for $190,000. dollars a preserved original. But even ones with some mileage on them, uh, 45,000 miles for 75 grand. Uh, the prices are just stupid. I mean, is this from the Fast and Furious? Is that yes. why we're seeing this? That the makes sense. The first Fast and Furious movie, mm -hmm. of course, had the super in it, made right. it sort of an icon. Uh, but not that long ago, you could buy a turbo Supra for $50,000, that made a lot of sense for a really nice one. Yeah. Or you could buy a crappy one and build it up, you know, like yeah. uh, Freddie, I think, bought his for a uh, non-turbo car for under 30, or right. like around 20, and right. then made it into a very nice car. Yeah, now do you think now is the time to buy one? Is the value still going to go up, or is it kind of at this plateau point? I think it is overpriced. Okay. I think it has reached sort of a fever, crazy pitch, and uh, no. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now is not the time to buy one of these. No. So you think is, they're going to come back down in value? They're not that powerful mm -hmm. for, I mean, at the time they were a very powerful car. They're, they're grand touring kind of just mm -hmm. lumpy. I mean, obviously you can modify them to take insane horsepower with the 2JZ, like thousands mm -hmm. of horsepower or whatever, but stock, the ones that are bringing all this money, it's not 
a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar driving experience. It's right. Not even close. Right. I mean, there is a thing about stock cars because they're only original once, mm -hmm. and people modify them so much. Where then there's more value in something that is original. So I I can see why there's a lot of value to them. One owner Targa, thirty four thousand miles, one hundred and thirty two grand. Does that look like a hundred and thirty two thousand dollar car? Crazy. So we pulled up to that and they think, boy, they spent one hundred and thirty two thousand. No, there's no right. chance. No chance. And if you told someone that like ten years ago, they would think you were nuts. Right. Um, next on the list, and a lot of people say this, I totally agree with it, air-cooled Porsches, especially mm -hmm. the impact bumper Porsches, not the special ones like a Turbo or right. any of the rare Speedsters or any of the special editions, but just normal Carreras. They mm -hmm. made a gazillion of these cars. Right. And stupid. Mm -hmm. Stupid, stupid, stupid prices. But what, why, why do you think it's stupid? Maybe just Porsches in general, the value is getting higher. So let me give you an example mm -hmm. here, because this Porsche sold for $83,000, a 1987 911, right. so it's the impact bumper. They say G50 because it has the smoother transmission. Right. A few years earlier, they had a different style transmission that I don't mind as much, but the G50s bring a lot more. Right. But look at the mileage on this thing, 149,000 miles. Okay, that's crazy. And it's knocking on the door of a hundred grand. That's great. I, I mean, like, but I get the nostalgia for, is nostalgia, is that the right word? Nostalgia, nostalgia yeah. for the air-cooled Porsche. I Certainly, understand certain. it. There are very, very cool. cool cars. Right. They are very good looking. There are a billion of them. A right. A billion of them. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense to me that something with this kind of mileage, where 10 years ago this would have been a $20,000 car, mm -hmm. is now $80,000. And there's just so many, to, like, who is who is buying these? I guess, especially with money getting tight now, I guess when they were handing out money to everybody because of the uh, right. the virus, um, <laughs> a lot of people bought air cooled 911s and the prices went insane. But I just, I don't understand this one personally. Okay. A low mileage one of these would be right. over 100 grand. Right. Well, just because they made so many of them, it doesn't make sense. That's but where then, the value comes in, is when there's not as many. But then you go up to a turbo. Okay. Why buy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great power. But I. <laughs> it's not that much more. Okay, I understand where you're going with that. So, like a nice 50,000 mile right. turbo mm -hmm. is 130 to $150,000. Right. Okay. But then but then you go to a 3.2 Carrera just because it has a smoother shifting transmission and it's in the same league. And that mm -hmm. it, it makes no sense. And there's tons of these out there. Right. So. Right. I mean, like I said, I, I understand the nostalgia for it, but if there's so many that are made, I, I... Right. Good cars. I like them. I just mm -hmm. think overpriced. Right. So, is it weird if I put my leg up here? Mm. <laughs> Oh, we're getting that, sore. That, it's just all the like yeah. everything runs down to it when you're sitting for a while and it just starts like sorry. Boom. So no, next on good. the list, I know these German cars. We'll get to American ones in a little bit. Okay. But uh, the BMW M3s, yes, E30 generation, mm -hmm. E36, Careful and E46. Because Jake loves BMW. I know, but Careful. they're so expensive. So the first generation does look very cool. Mm -hmm. Very boxy, they wide are body. Sexy. Those very are great cool. looking cars. But look at the prices, $114,000. <laughs> you know, uh, ones with 200,000 miles are getting $50,000. They are so cool it's looking insane. though. They are so cool looking. They're great Aesthetics looking. alone, that's worth it. They I, look so sexy. I agree with you, but then the E36, it looks like, no. it, it doesn't look special enough. No. Like the US spec cars at 240 horsepower. Right. Not worth the crazy prices like this 12,000 mile one bringing $80,000, $85,000. Right. It, it doesn't look special. Then no. the E46, another one, probably the most refined of the bunch, bringing mm. stupid, stupid six figure right. money as well. Right. Uh, enough to where there's so many great alternatives uh, from BMWs themselves. You can get an M2 competition, mm -hmm. which. I know we're in BMW world and you don't care at all, but that's like <laughs> the end all be all of the car made in the last five-ish years or so, yeah. beats this in every way, does what these right. old M3s are supposed to do, just with a smaller number, about the same size, and those are right. forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000? Right, but this M3, if you like, just blends in with traffic, there's nothing stand right. out about it. I don't know, Jake, are we way off? What do you think? No, they're definitely overpriced. I, I The E46 M3 is one of my favorite cars, yeah. but it's not more than a $30,000 driving experience. Right, mm -hmm. you're not gonna pay 25 grand for a 200,000 mile car. It, it, it's stupid. It, it makes no sense. So, the next on, the next one on my list, I feel like mm -hmm. all the modern Mopars, right. all the Hellcats mm -hmm. and Demons, mm -hmm. 
and the Challenger 170s mm -hmm. that everybody's buying right now for crazy, crazy money. Right. Way overpriced. Right. Well, they're hard to keep track of, first of all, because there's this special edition, this last call, this jailbreak, this, blah, 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 right. this. Right. And it's, it's just like there's so many specialties because there's this huge mass of people, um, maybe of a little bit older generation, there I say boomers, that are really obsessed with this, where I would love to have the original version of it back in the right. day. I would pay the money that these new ones are getting for that old school. It, it's kind of silly and every car depreciates. I get that this is all done and this mm -hmm. is it. It's the last of the big horsepower Hemis before they go electric, but right. $197,000 for the Demon 170. And like, what? or over 200, we've seen over 200 what? for some of these. You know, Bill Goldberg sold a pair at Barrett Jackson. Well, that's but Bill like Goldberg, yeah. Four years ago, our friend Elliot Alvis mm -hmm. sold his for around $40,000 right. with no miles on it. And then unfortunately for him, they went way up. <laughs> In price. Bad timing. And I don't get it because they made tens of thousands of these. And just paying 60 grand for a normal 2014, 2015 mm -hmm. Hellcat and then paying 200 grand right. for this or 150 for a wide body. There's mm -hmm. just so many of well, them mm -hmm. and they will, mm -hmm. they will depreciate. They're, they're going to depreciate. I think that hands it to Dodge and how well they did their marketing and mm -hmm. what they chose, what to campaigns. And they chose to run a lot of stuff online, which is a great way to get the word out. They spent a lot of money on marketing the right way. It's a very cool brand that people want to be a part of. Mopar or no car has always been a thing, but they did a really good job marketing these. Yes, I would love to own one. I would love to experience it. I think it would be a great car to have, like the last of the era, that last of the second coming of the muscle car right. era but I'm, I'm not paying these prices. It's, yeah. it's, it's too much. It's crazy. There's a lot of cars I'd put my money on before that. Mm -hmm. So next on my list is mm -hmm. the Jeep XJ Cherokee. No. Boxy things. Which is cool. I love boxy SUVs. That's the best body style. I but... bought one for 300 bucks that was rust free. <laughs> had 300,000 miles of bad head gasket. Got it going. Sold it for, oh, I don't remember, $3,000. <laughs> I've, I've had several of these. Like back when I was a car dealer, yeah. I would buy them for two or three thousand dollars and sell them for four or five thousand dollars and yeah. that, it was the easiest money ever yeah. and then all of a sudden people went crazy for these things wow the current record is forty two thousand dollars for one with what? five thousand miles what? obviously that's the lowest mileage a limited last year four what? by four but still ones with miles on them fifty thousand mile Cherokee, 1993, $18,000. Oh I feel like you could buy a perfectly great new one for around the same price. Well, the new Cherokees aren't the same. These were actually pretty capable little off-roaders. See, look at this one. It's not mm -hmm. super, super low mileage. 32,000 right. miles, which is low, I guess, for 1999, but it's just a base sport with steel wheels. Right. Sold for $23,000. I get <laughs> that that's, compared to these others, not a ton of money, yeah. but for what you get. Well, and maybe people are holding on to them because they feel like this is going to be cool in the next five to 10 years. This is what I'm going to hold on to. Again, that old first generation Bronco craze of that boxy look and how valuable they are now. Mm -hmm. This gives me that same vibe but people are holding on to them now. Yeah, but you could buy a similar era mm -hmm. Jeep Wrangler for way less money, have more off-road capability. Like get right. a Rubicon with locking axles and things. These off-road, they don't have a lot of kit. I mean, it's, it's very basic. And there's a lot of modern off-roaders that you could get a 4Runner. Right. Could, much more capable cars right. than this. And I personally don't get it. I know I'm pulling up the lowest mileage ones, but people are paying 10, 15 grand for these with 150,000 right. miles on it. It's just... No. They're... they're five thousand dollar drivers they're, right they're cool and they're low mileage but they made hundreds of thousands of these there's a very mm -hmm. long production run on these from the 80s until mm -hmm. 2001 it's, a, it's not that special right so you ready for the last car mm-hmm yeah you said that i was gonna be mad about one <laughs> what is it gonna be buick grand national shut that you're even wearing you're the joking jacket. you're joking right now they're great cars you're joking they're great cars N I'll set this up Wait, by saying... You're, ser you're seriously going to throw this one on the list? I'm not saying they're bad cars. None of these cars on the list are bad cars. Right. I'm saying they are overpriced. Do you want to sleep by yourself tonight? <laughs> well, they're overpriced. Did those just words just come out of your mouth? Don't you think they're kind of overpriced for what they are? I don't think they're overpriced. They're the coolest, sexiest car that I've ever seen in my whole life. How could you say that? Well, they made like... 30,000 of them, and most of them are 1987s. For whatever reason, the last year people were like, oh, I better get them while they're still around. That's the best 
last year to get them. And they're so sexy. They're sleeper cars. They're all black. They're not show off cars. Like, look, my yard. The blah, production blah, blah, blah. numbers like, they are They are amazing cars. And people are paying crazy money. Um, As example, they should be because they're incredible. For cars. example, 61,000 mile car. You just need to put a sensor over your. Would you pay $45,000 for it? I have never wanted to slap you until now. Oh. I actually have this urge or kick you. I, I want to kick you with my bad leg right now. I think that they're it very hurts. cool 20 something thousand dollar drivers. I'm going to swing it around. Or $30,000, $40,000 maybe for the nicest one on the planet. But for the money they're bringing, you know, the GNXs are very rare. I get that they're only made 500, you know those statistics. 547. The very rare car, mm -hmm. one of the big performance cars of its time. Mm -hmm. That makes sense right. that that's a hundred plus thousand dollar car. Two hundred. Two hundred plus thousand dollar car. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Maybe they are a little overpriced. But <laughs> stop it right now. The Grand oh National, my gosh. as cool as it is, the Darth Vader. Look, they made a lot of them. Okay. There's okay. a lot of them out there. Okay. I I feel like I've don't know you anymore like your judgment like there's something like you had the flu and there's something that happened like you had a partial lobotomy <laughs> or you had a, such a high fever that it like actually cooked your brain that you would add a grand national to this list but people are paying fifty thousand dollars for normal mileage ones normal mileage ones yeah. they're amazing cars. well i'm just saying for normal mileage cars and they're paying a hundred grand for ones that have no miles on it like people who put them away yeah, it, literally it just... the coolest car on the road. Okay. Well, if Literally. Agree to disagree. I, I, they're they're very cool. Wait, you you you're actually saying that they belong firmly on this list? They're overpriced. They're cool, but they're overpriced, and I am so sorry. This is our first but it's fight. True. This is our first real fight. We're gonna have to take this off camera. Thank <laughs> you so much for watching. I'm so mad at you. <laughs> you really did this. You're a terrible person. <laughs> sorry. I thought I knew Just, you. Please forgive I me. I thought please. I knew you. Please. Oh, who are you? You do make bad decisions about cars. <laughs>